Alright, welcome back to more than PGT Gaming, and today I actually want to talk about our young uh, elf-like character, uh, Klee, from Genshin Impact. So, uh, anybody who knows who Klee is, you know, which should be almost everybody who's played Genshin Impact in any capacity, should recognize this character. So, she is the youngest member of the Knights of Pavodius, and she's coming up all on the banner. And I know a lot of people are excited to see her have a rerun. Uh, and I know that for some people, they have not actually gotten her. Um, there are plenty of team setups that are available for this character. Uh, however, because of the way that it's been designed, uh, her character... Uh, kit her elemental skill which i do actually want to go up to uh it's called a jump jumpy dumpty uh it throws out bombs and then they spread apart okay these things will explode on contact or after a certain duration of time uh and you start with like two charges so you can do it once and then you can do it again if you want to however Upon second usage, the first usage will immediately disappear. So kind of keep that in mind when using her. That's why you kind of have to stagger the, the uses. So that's why uh, her main support is actually going to be Kaza. Uh, Kaza is a really great character, and he is currently on the banner. He has the ability to draw in... Klee's bombs and also enemies so you can draw the bombs to the enemies and have them explode I know this sounds like a really crazy idea and there's a few characters who have things that he can gather up and Klee's bombs are one of them okay mind you Klee was released uh, in the uh, not during the actual initial release of Genshin Impact, but the update thereafter. So I think it, she was in 1.1 originally, and she's reran a few times, which is good. Uh, and there has been a little bit of support for her. Uh, as you can see, I do have Klee's skills all to nine. I have not crowned her in any ways, uh, and I do not plan on crowning her. So crowns I reserve for other characters, not Klee. But Klee is still good. Okay. Um, as you can see here, I have her at 9. And then I have her at C0. Okay. I have thought about getting her up uh, up higher. But if I do, I would go up to the fourth one. Uh, simply because it leaves a, when she leaves the field, uh, during her Sparks and Splash, she'll trigger an explosion that deals... 555 percent that's 555 percent of her attack as aoe pyro damage okay which is crazy if you ask me uh her c5 um does increase the level of sparks and splash uh and then she'll regenerate three energy when she uses sparks and splash um yeah, I, I don't know about that. The The biggest problem that Klee has as a character is that her talent, in particular her burst exactly, uh, it causes AoE pyro damage, okay? It's called Sparks and Splash. We were already over this a little bit. But what it does is it attacks nearby enemies with AoE pyro damage. However, the moment that she leaves the field, the burst ends. It just stops completely. Okay, I really wish this was a, an off-field DPS thing, because that would be amazing. But unfortunately, it's not. Okay, so it is one of the major problems with her. Um, so yeah, just kind of keep that in mind when you're using her. Her burst... While it, it sounds cool to use, it seemed powerful, if you're planning on switching her off the field uh, at all, um, 
especially frequently, it, it might not necessarily be a good choice to upgrade. And a lot of times when I'm playing as Klee, I don't really use Sparks and Slash all that much. Uh, the things I'm using with Klee, Jumpy Dumpty, and her normal attack. Okay, these are by far the number one and number two skills for her. Uh, I would say Jumpy Dumpty is definitely up there as being number one, and the normal attack is number two. She is very easy to use, okay, if you have Kazaha, okay? And I will demonstrate here in a little bit on how to run her character. Um, artifacts, pretty simple. I just went with a two-piece Gladiator's Finale and a two-piece Crimson Witch of Flame. Uh, and then you can have your last piece would be whatever. I think uh, I have a Lava Walker for my goblet. Yeah, I have a Lava Walker. So I just kind of chuck it, okay? And I know a lot of people are like, well, you should be running a uh, Elemental Mastery build. Uh, you can if you want. Uh, I went for more of an attack build. Uh, but I do indeed have a Elemental Mastery goblet. So that kind of makes up for some of it. Um, Stat-wise, she's all right. Um, so we're going to look at the stats real quick. This is with her. With her uh, attacks, uh, or with all the stuff that I have on her, she has a little bit of HP. She has a bit of attack, a bit of defense. Uh, her crit rate and crit damage, uh, they're, they're okay. They're not spectacular. Energy recharge is above 100%, and pyro damage bonus is at 90%. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much at zero. Um, nothing really too special here. The Elemental Mastery is at 187. So I have her at level 88. I got her up to level 80, and then I just gradually leveled her up. So let's take a look at her weapon. So the weapon I have is Dodoko Tails. Uh, for those that are unaware of what this weapon is and where to get it, uh, this was introduced about two years ago uh, during the summer event in the Golden Apple Archipelago. Um, it was just an event weapon uh, so I absolutely love this weapon it seems very thematic of her uh, however it's no longer available uh, and unless uh, Hoyoverse makes it so that uh, event weapons can be gotten at a later time I think this is lost to the the sands of time okay so I have an R5 level 90 version of this um, if you were if I were to say, hey, what other good weapon is out there? Uh, I know the Wood Sith is not a bad choice because it's got good crit damage. Uh, this is probably easily accessible for some free-to-play players. If you haven't play been playing too long, you might not necessarily have this, in which case you might be stuck with other weapons, uh, other four-star weapons. Um, worst case scenario, you have to stick with something like a Magic Guide or a... Thrilling Tales of Mag er, Dragon Slayers. Though, I don't recommend this weapon for her because unless you're planning on moving off her a lot, I guess, uh, it's good for characters that are going to be on the field temporarily and then switch off. Um, so, th that's three-star weapons. Uh, Four-star weapons, like I said, uh, you're probably going to be stuck with like Sacrificial Fragments or Widsith. Uh... If you're lucky enough to have a five-star uh, weapon, kudos. Uh, I would definitely look at what those options are. I'm not going to go through them in this video simply because I don't own any five-star catalyst. Uh, I have not been blessed that way because I generally don't wish on the weapon banner. <laughs> All right, so uh, team composition. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm just sitting here right here. Oh my god, Klee. Okay. So I generally run Klee with Jean Lee and Kazaha. Okay. The four slot can be whoever you want. Uh, I would generally pick someone like Zhang Ling, Bennett, uh, maybe Chi Chi, depending if you need healing. Um, I do not, and I repeat, do not recommend uh, Barbara in the team. I do not run Vape with this team at all. Uh, simply because uh, 
what typically happens when I try to use vape is I'm applying hydro to myself and enemies that are cryo based will freeze the team and nothing is scarier than having your Klee frozen and having Jean Lee's shield wear off. And then you have a sitting duck Klee who is fairly squishy, I might add, no matter what level she is or what she has for artifacts and stats. She is squishy, she will get hurt, and she may die. Okay, so I'd rather not have that happen. I'd rather have her be the little protected uh, child as she should be uh, with a mostly mature follow the figure. Uh, <laughs> good laughs protecting the children everywhere he goes. Okay, so so what does this actually look like in combat? Uh, I'm going to showcase some combat. Ah ha ha. Um, so we're actually just going to go over to Spiral Abyss because Spiral Abyss is a good place to dictate how this functions. And I haven't been in Spiral Abyss recently, so let's take a quick look to see how it functions. So walking in. Okay, don't care. All right, so we're going to just pop into floor nine. Uh, we're going to take a look see what we're up against. Just to kind of take a quick look. Um, looking at the scenarios, I'm going to tell you right now that this is not a very good scenario for Klee at all. Mainly because there's a pyro slime there. Um, so first half is where she'd have to go. So we're going to just plop her in with our team that I spoke about. Uh, let's cause her. And then we're just going to throw in uh, Bennett, I guess. And then on the opposing side, I'm just going to take whoever. It, it does not matter. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I did that wrong. Uh, let's go with that, that, and... Take a hyper bloom team. Okay. Okay. It does not matter what you typically take when you're doing Spiral Abyss. Uh, I just take whatever is effective this for, whatever sounds the best. Anyway, so here we are with Klee. We have enemies. We can do that. And then you follow it up with Kazaha's ability. You can burst with them. And then put Summon up a shield, the and then you have to deal with capturing everybody. Again, this is a pain in the butt when you have lots of spread out enemies. Time to go. Again, the cooldown for her jumpy dumpty is kind of annoying. Again, she has the ability to stagger enemies like crazy. Uh, as you might notice, I'm not actually doing any jump canceling, just to show off uh, what a person who doesn't know uh, how to do that would do. So we did all right. Uh, I'm not too particularly fond of what we're doing, uh, but yeah, the, you just choose whatever sounds the best. Normal and charge attacks. That's definitely a thing. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Again, you don't have to be perfect on your timing or anything like that. Uh, I always recommend the shield, though. Uh, so a good thing about Klee is strategically placement. Um, if you hit jean Lee's pillar, you can actually use it as a stepping point or a stopping point for his for her attack. So... And Klee can kill enemies so quickly, it's not even funny. And you may have noticed that I haven't even used uh, uh, Bennett, like, at all. And I have not used Klee's uh, burst, like, at all. So, I think that's enough showing off of that. So you kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. So we're going to go ahead and leave for now. It's not a bad team, uh, as long as you understand, like, what you want to do. Uh, but don't rely on her burst too much. Because what will happen is if you rely on the burst too much... Oops, give me a second. Uh, you're you're going to get hurt. You're going to want to stay in the burst longer than what you intend to be in. And it's going to end up leaving you open to attacks. Unless you kind of perfect the uh, jump canceling. So, um, the jump canceling is weird. I'm not really good at it. That's why I typically don't use it. Um, so, it is what Klee is, okay? If you're thinking that Klee's gonna clear a bunch of hard content for you, um, I'm just gonna say no, that's not gonna be the case. Uh, she is optimal for some scenarios, but she's also absolutely terrible in, at others. Her greatest weakness is a Pyro Slime or a Pyro Abyss Mage. You cannot break their shields at all. They're basically invulnerable to all of her attacks. You have no way around it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, it's just like the people who would use, uh, you know, Ganyu. You know, at least Ganyu has a normal attack where you don't have to use it as a charge attack to deal regular normal damage, but all of her things otherwise are cryo based. So I've had friends who would play and they'd be using uh, Ganyu and run across a cryo slime and they wouldn't know what to do. Okay. Likewise, Klee is the same scenario, is if you run across those two enemies, you can't hurt them. And if you're against a, uh, a best lector, I believe that's what they're called. I'm bad with names. Um, or maybe it's a herald. I forget what the, which one it is. Um, you're not going to be able to hurt them either, uh, especially in like their second phase in particular when they put up the shield. Um, so she definitely has her weaknesses. Okay. Um, on the plus side, she's super effective against cryo enemies. Uh, she just burns through their shields. She can kill, uh, those cryo abyss mages, the, uh, electro abyss mages, and even, uh, enemies that are dendro based. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, when you use her, she is really useful on dealing with those types of enemies. Um, she's also good in the overworld to a degree if you need to get rid of certain things or burn things. So if you need to like light lanterns, uh, she's way more reliable on doing that than someone like Zhang Ling because Zhang Ling uses Gooba and Gooba doesn't always have great targeting. Okay, um, If you have Bennett, Bennett's probably a little bit more substantial on doing that he's more reliable i guess in that regards um but Klee doesn't have to worry about any cooldowns because her normal attacks does that yanfei also does the same things that Klee does um but because of the limited nature of Klee's attack sometimes aiming is really hard uh so kind of keep that in mind in combat and in the overworld because you can have an enemy or object right in front of you and if you use her charge attack, you might miss them. However, if you use her normal attack, 
you still might miss them depending on height and distance so kind of keep that in mind she she is definitely a high ceiling on mastering distance that is the big thing with her okay um overall otherwise uh she's terrible on stamina while she doesn't necessarily use stamina for things like you know i'm trying to think like uh doing like flashy moves but if you use her charged attack it costs a lot to use it if you run it costs you more if you climb it costs you more so the idea is like she is very stamina heavy so if you haven't collected like all of the oculi in Mondstadt and uh, Leoe, I would definitely do that to make sure you have the maximum amount of stamina to actually use her effectively. Okay, um, so that that is a, a key point there. Okay, um, on the flip side of that, uh, I like I want to bring up <laughs> what what she has, and that is, well. The ability to find the unique resources in Mondstadt uh, on your little mini map. If you are still needing these, this is really great. Um, I don't think there are a whole lot of characters that do it for Mondstadt specifically. I think she is one of the only ones that does it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not 100% sure. I know there are like a couple that are that do like uh, that do Lee away and Sumeru and Inazuma and everyone's got their own little bit but I think she might be one of the only ones if not the only one that can actually do it so uh which is really useful but for people who've been playing a really long time and what I mean by a long time I mean like more than a year uh they might not even need this so if you don't need this thing and you're like I already have good damage dealers I have enough control you could definitely skip this character. I would not blame you. She's not for everybody. Okay? And to a lot of people, she's a liability. You know? She's not very strong. Her damage output is not terribly great. Um, yes, you can kind of keep her on the field and deal with a lot of, like, shields, but eh, there are probably better ways to deal with that. Okay? It's one of the main reasons why I stick with a Hyper Bloom team rather than, well, Pyro. <laughs> or a combination of her. I only really use her team in, like, the Abyss or for any type of, you know, domain or, uh, you know, event in which her skills would actually be useful. A lot of times she just gets benched, okay? I don't run around with her all that much because of her high stamina cost. I don't run around with her because I don't really need resources in Mondstadt. So she does get sidelined a lot. Uh, the only time I really use her is on a regular basis is in that in the Spiral Abyss because you have to have two teams and she's halfway decent. Uh, could I bench her permanently? Yeah. But I like using her. She's fun to use. Um, however, one of the biggest negatives I have to say is, uh, if you have voice lines on, sometimes she can be kind of annoying. And I'll be honest with you, that can kind of be said with any character. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so if you like her, get her. If you don't, uh, don't be, feel pressured to get her. Um, again, don't worry about constellations. She, she is good at C0. Uh, she gets gradually better as you go up, like every other five star or any character. Um, but I definitely say the biggest thing that you need to make sure that you have is yourself a Kazaha. Okay, if you don't have a Kazaha, uh, things are going to be a little bit tougher. Okay, she is playable, but she's going to definitely shine with a Kazaha simply because of his elemental skill that allows him to grab the bombs. And you don't even have to go that high. You, you can just do a quick hop and plunge, depending on how far away they are. Because it does kind of have a an effect to draw things in. Uh, one positive note about her bombs. 
they float.